He says, uh, public authority is in the hands of a representative of the masses. Public authority is in the hands of a representative of the masses. Few members within the masses have been selected, um, and they've been selected, and he does, an, I, I, didn't, uh, I don't think I remember highlighting this in the discussion, but he says in this, uh, he talks about physicists that lived during his time, and he said that some physicists, I can't remember who it was, let me see if I can find the footnote, um, Herman Viley, and here's a footnote, he goes, Herman Viley, one of the greatest of present day physicists, the companion um, to Einstein, is in the habit of saying in conversation that if 10 or 12 specified individuals were to die suddenly, these individuals being phys physicists, it almost certain that the marvels of physics today would be lost forever to humanity. So there are certain individuals within society that have such power, that have such, that have such insight, that have such universal, immediate, globalized appeal, whether for good or for bad, that if these few individuals were to be removed from society, it would immediately change um, the, the, the landscape, the topography of intellectual life, of um, the possibility for advancement technological and political. Right? There are certain individuals within society that have the potential and have contributed so much to society, for good or for bad, that they set themselves outside of almost society, right? So there's that, there's that, uh, there's that paradox. Um, and this individual and these individuals are in distinction to the mass man, right? The mass man is not like that, right? You have the individual who sets outside, despite the fact that I'm a member of society, I've set myself outside of society. I can look outside of society and recognize that though I am mass, though I am consumer, Though I am father, I'm not like everyone else. There is some, there's a unique quality to what it is that I do, to who it is that I am. We all should be able to do this. Unfortunately, however, so many of us live our lives, according to Gazette, day to day, in constant consumption, in constant um, uh, fascination with others, with society, with public life, with fashion, with all of the things that are inherently public that we lose ourselves, right? We lose the individual, we lose the life to the collective, we lose the man to the mass, right? So that we lose ourselves to this idea of a mass life. Gasset then goes to say, they are in possession, the mass man, they are in possession of power in such an unassailable manner that it would be difficult to find in history examples of government so powerful as these are. Now here's the important point. When such a public authority attempts to justify itself, justify itself, it makes no reference at all to the future. Right? And this is what I think is important for uh, contemporary discussion of the mass man. And here's how we'll have a better understanding of what the mass man is um, for Gasset, right? Let's, let me read this line again. When such a public authority attempts to justify itself, it makes no reference at all to the future. On the contrary, it shuts itself up in the present and says with perfect sincerity, I am an abnormal form of government imposed by circumstance. Imposed by circumstance. So that now that we see circumstance isn't this sort of passive potential, that circumstance, according to Gisset, is this kinetic, emotive, um, reactive uh, uh, prescriptive function, right? It, it does stuff. Circumstance for circumstance for Gisset isn't passive, right? And that's um, a very important point. He says in a line, um, "I am an abnormal form of government imposed by circumstance." So that circumstance imposes, it creates this form of what he calls an abnormal. And here's the political implications. Circumstances create abnormal government, right? And specifically the circumstances that he's talking about is the circumstances are the circumstances of the masked man. The masked man creates circumstances that in itself create 
abnormal government. And what does he say? When a public authority attempts to justify itself, right, it makes no reference at all to the future. So that what this does, this government then does, this abnormal government does, is that it becomes, and the technical term for this is what's known as dogma. It becomes dogmatic. Right? This abnormal government becomes dogmatic. And what does dogma mean, right? What is dogmatism, what is dogma, and what is dogmatic? What does it mean to say that? Anytime you're talking about justification, and he uses the word justification, he says, when such a public authority, this abnormal government, attempts to justify itself, attempts to justify itself through the use of dogma, what does that mean? Okay, imagine that um, you have a child, you have a little girl, and your daughter comes up to you um, at, let's say, 7 o'clock at night and says, um, Mommy, Daddy, can I go outside and play? So she asks you something. She's appealing to your authority. Obviously, if you say yes, she'll go outside. If you say no, she won't go outside. She, your daughter, recognizes the fact that you are um, the harbinger, if you will, the holder, the locus of power. So she goes to you, she appeals to your authority, she appeals to your power and says, Mommy, Daddy, can I go outside and play? You say no, right? And your daughter immediately is like, well, you know, being a curious kid now, I'm no longer like an infant, I have reason, I want to know why I can't go out inside, outside and play. So your daughter will say, well, Daddy, why can't I go, Mommy, why can't I go outside and play? Um, and you might say, well, because I said so, right? That because I said so is an appeal to your own authority, right? You're not appealing to anything outside of you. You are the locus of power, you are the locus of authority, and the reason you can't do it is because I said you can't do it. That's what dogma is, right? That's what it is to be dogmatic. It's a very clear, hopefully very simple example so that you understand what dogma is, right? To say that something is dogmatic is to say that the institution, the individual, appeals to none other than itself. It doesn't make appeals to anything outside of its own power. Same example. Your daughter comes up to me. She says, Daddy, can I go outside and play? I say, no, you can't go outside and play. She says, why can't I go outside and play? And I say, well, baby, it's, it's late, right? And the lights are going, uh, the street lights are now, now on, and I don't want you to go outside and play because it's dark, and, you know, there, there are threats when, when it's dark. And she says, okay, I understand, right? So what I've given her now is a tool. She understands that when it is dark, there's a potential for threat, and we might get into a further discussion on, on what that means. But now she recognizes how I've justified me saying no. My saying no has been justified by the fact that it's dark outside. It hasn't been justified by the fact that I've appealed to my own authority. And what Gassette is saying in this is that the mass man, the mass man justifies his abnormal government that he's created by appealing to itself. Right? I make an appeal to itself. So here's what he says. And not only that, not only that, he, he takes it even a step, so I mean that in itself is pretty deep, but he takes it a step further by talking about how it's only concerned with the present. It has no concern for the future. So I'm going to read this whole section now uninterrupted and go through and explain. This is a very, very key section in uh, Chapter 5 analysis. He says, when such a public authority, when such a public authority attempts to justify itself, it makes no reference at all to the future. On the contrary, it shuts itself up in the present and says with perfect sincerity, I am an abnormal form of government imposed by circumstances. Hence, its activities are reduced to dodging the difficulties of the hour, not solving them, but escaping from them from the time being, employing any methods whatsoever, even at the cost of accumulating thereby still greater difficulties for the hour which follows. Such has public power always been when exercised directly by the masses. What in the world does that mean? 